narcissist has no limitations. The narcissist has no limitations or restrictions on their dysfunctional behavior. They place no significance or importance on the act of controlling or reducing the dysfunctional way in which they act or conduct themselves. The narcissist could be described as someone who is the lowest of the low. They could be described as people who are the most immoral or socially inferior of all. They do not conform to any accepted standards of morality. They do not hold any principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior. They do not honor or respect any system of values or principles of conduct. They have no limitations or restrictions over the way in which they behave. They engage in behaviors that might be considered to be immoral. Behaviors that are unfair and not based on the principles of equality and justice. They engage in activities that are dishonest or dishonorable. They engage in behaviors that might be considered to be undesirable or unexpected. Behaviors that a normal healthy person would not approve of. The narcissist has no limitations or restrictions on their dysfunctional behavior. There is no low that they won't go to. There is no boundary that they will not cross. If they feel the need to do or engage in something, to exercise their false sense of power and control, or regulate their emotions and boost their self-esteem, they will do it. The longer you stay with a narcissist, the more you will realize and accept this. The narcissist can be very silly and immature, willfully causing pain and suffering to you and feeling no concern about it. They will spoil or ruin any opportunities or chances of success that you may have. They will display a strong or unreasoning desire for revenge. They will desire to hurt or harm you in return for an injury or wrong that they have suffered. The quickest and most efficient way to identify if you have caused a narcissistic injury is to observe how the narcissist is treating you. If they display a desire to hurt or harm you, whether they are overt or passive aggressive, it is likely that you have injured them. They will often overreact, responding more emotionally or forcibly than is right or reasonable. You may think that you have seen everything that the narcissist is capable of doing. You may think that they couldn't do anything that you wouldn't expect, anything that would cause you to feel astonished or shocked. But then suddenly they do something so immorally wrong and socially inferior that even you didn't expect it to happen. Something that you never thought they would do something you never thought they were capable of. This is because they have no limitations or restrictions on their dysfunctional behavior. If they feel the need to do something, to get a reaction from you, or to make themselves feel better, they will do it. In their minds, they are the victims. Everything that they are doing is intended to defend or protect them. They perceive or anticipate you as being a threat to them. They believe that they are in danger or that they are under attack. So they are going to do whatever it takes to defend themselves. The problem is, to anyone outside of them or their situation, it doesn't look so serious or urgent. It can be very difficult to tell what they believe is threatening them 
or what they are defending themselves against. The reason for this is because they are fighting something within them rather than something that is occurring in the external environment. If you confront the narcissist on their behaviour, it will trigger them to react with very intense feelings of shame. These feelings of shame can be very irrational and exaggerated. It will cause a narcissistic injury and they will feel as though their world no longer makes any sense. It causes them to, to feel extremely vulnerable or at risk. They feel trapped and oppressed. They feel as though they are in a fight for their lives. The intense feelings of shame that they feel can overbalance the delicate, vulnerable concoction of lies and fabrication that they have created to manage their self-worth. It makes them reflect on and question the false favourable opinion that they have created of themselves, which then has an effect on their ability to follow through and get things done. The only thing that they can do in this situation, other than going within and imploding, is to attack you in what they believe is self-defense, to stop themselves from collapsing violently inwards. When they feel that this is happening, they will react with an expression of violent, uncontrollable anger, or they will use tactics such as denial, projection, blame shifting, or gaslighting. They will accuse you of hurting or manipulating them. They will call you crazy, or say that you are not right, or something is wrong with you. This is all designed to prevent the intense pressures within them from bursting inward by deflecting the force onto you through use of coercion or intimidation. In their minds, if they can label you as being crazy, they don't have to believe anything that you say. If they say that you are trying to hurt or manipulate them, you are not a trustworthy or credible source of information. It has nothing to do with the external environment. It may seem as though they are trying to convince you or get you to believe something, but they are actually just trying to convince themselves. If they can get you to believe it, it makes it more believable for them. But they are not really targeting you. It is a hopeless sense, need or desire for them to convince themselves that they are not worthless or insignificant. When you are in their presence, they feel threatened by some quality, ability or talent of yours. They feel threatened, so they believe that you must be threatening them. They feel vulnerable or at risk, so they believe that you must be causing them to feel vulnerable or at risk. In their minds, the evidence that you are threatening them is in their feeling of being threatened regardless of what is occurring in the external environment. They believe that their feelings are facts. If they feel threatened, they believe that you are threatening them. If you try to display any facts or evidence to them, they will think that you are trying to manipulate them. They will think that you are trying to control or influence them, or use them to your advantage. They will feel as though you are trying to talk them out of their feelings, which they believe to be facts. In their minds, they believe that you are trying to manipulate them, which will only convince them even more that they are right. They know that what they are doing is wrong. They might hold idiosyncratic beliefs or impressions that are contradicted by reality or rational argument, but this is usually caused by them believing that their thoughts, wishes or desires can influence the external world or denying truth or reality. They know what is right and what is wrong. They are capable of identifying 
when something wrong is done to them. They know that abuse towards anyone is wrong, but in their minds they are not abusing anyone. In their minds what they are doing is self-defense or justice for the wrong that you have done to them. They believe that you are the abuser. You are the one who has caused them to feel threatened and caused them to feel hurt. So they believe that you deserve everything that they do to you. They might not tell you this, but you can usually identify it from their behavior. And this is why they have no limitations or restrictions on their behavior. They believe that they are under attack and they are just trying to survive. So they will do whatever it takes to make you ineffective or unable to produce a significant or desired effect by applying an opposite force or effect. This can even result in murder if that's what they have to do to neutralize their target and defend themselves against their feelings of being threatened or hurt. They have to control the target to manage or regulate their self-worth. The loss of, con of their control over the target poses a threat to their self-worth and this loss of self-worth can put them in a state of despair where they then desire to murder their target. The murder of their target then allows the narcissist to re-establish control and their self-worth. The narcissist is very shameful, hurt and afraid. They experience painful feelings of humiliation or distress caused by their consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. They feel inadequate by you outdoing or surpassing them. They constantly experience pain and emotional distress. They constantly experience fear and anxiety caused by the threat of danger, pain or harm. They would prefer for you to be dead than for you to escape their control because it poses such a significant threat to their sense of self-worth, self-esteem and self-importance. Thank you for watching. I hope this video resonated with you. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Click the bell icon to receive notifications for my future videos. If you would like to donate, my PayPal link is in the video description. Coaching inquiries, you can email me at narcsofacoaching at gmail.com. Check out the new merchandise in the Narcsofa store where you can purchase your own Narcsofa t-shirt, tank top or mug. The link is in the video description. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.